Good morning to you all. Um, uh, I will start with um, my title, which is when to think um, endometriosis when you do your screening vaginal ultrasound. I need to screen this here. Okay, so I have nothing to disclose. The outline of my uh, talk is um, uh, to uh, show the importance to think of deep endometriosis before uh, you do any surgery, uh, uh, endometriotic surgery. There are controversies in uh, diagnosing deep endometriosis and when you need to change uh, your ultrasound from a screening ultrasound to do a dynamic transvaginal ultrasound. I will um, uh, touch about uh, identifying the appearance of deep endometriotic nodules and list some several ultrasound images. So first of all, why you need to think of deep endometriosis? Uh, as we uh, heard from yesterday about the patient who has been suffering from uh, uh, all symptoms of uh, endometriosis and <clears throat> have a, almost a handicapped life, uh, they go from one uh, place to the other, it takes very long time to diagnose. So when you do your basic uh, ultrasound and you think of endometriosis, you can diagnose these patients actually and start managing them. Um, the, you don't need any more uh, to diagnose the laparoscopy, uh, the endometriosis by doing a laparoscopy. You can predict the complexity of the um, surgery you need to do if you, if you decide for that. But when uh, you can uh, check when you need a multidisciplinary team, uh, you can uh, predict the time you need for your surgery and uh, what you need to do during the surgery. So this uh, lead to the optimum uh, surgery, one surgery, and uh, decrease the complication during surgery. You can have an informative consent of the patient because she knows what she is expecting during the surgery. You will be uh, having no surprise um, during the operation. So you will not, will not call a rectal, vagina, a rectal uh, uh, bowel rectal surgeon uh, during the surgery. You can plan it uh, beforehand and the patient will not be surprised after surgery. And as I said, you will have the one step uh, targeted uh, treating laparoscopy instead of multiple incomplete one. And this also will improve the research area, uh, like Dr. Um, uh, Muammar yesterday uh, said that we, we have no comparison between medical and uh, surgical uh, treatment because we never had any way to uh, assess patients about uh, their improvement uh, for the, of the progress of the disease. But with doing the follow-up with the ultrasound, we can have this and we can start doing these studies. The controversies in diagnosing endometriosis because it de all depends on what we believe. Uh, we used to have the gold standard as the, the laparoscopy uh, surgical diagnosis with or without um, uh, histopathology, but it is now widely accepted that we don't need uh, laparoscopy to diagnose uh, endometriosis, but we are still having a lot of surgeons who are doing this they still, uh, a lot of them do the la diagnostic laparoscopy. So people who are uh, surgeons, uh, some of them, not all, the highly trained, they know that they can uh, diagnose uh, endometriosis by other modalities, but some um, uh, new surgeons or unskilled, they do that. The uh, gynecologists who doesn't do surgery believe in uh, uh, history and clinical examination with trigger points. Uh, they can start doing the treatment of the, of the patient, but people who are belonging to the community of the uh, inter uh, International Society of Ultrasound in Obstetric and the Gynecology, who does uh, high skilled uh, uh, ultrasound, and they know how to see endometriosis by ultrasound, they believe in ultrasound in diagnosing um, endometriosis. The, uh, the problem with the, uh, a lot of um, uh, gynecologists in the whole world, they don't have an ultrasound uh, in, the, in the office, not like here in Dubai, most we are privileged, privileged to have an ultrasound machine with every, uh, in every office uh, doing this um, uh, examination available uh, right away during consultation. 
but it's not the case in all in all uh, places of the world. Gynecologists don't do their own uh, vaginal ultrasound. They send the patient to uh, the radiology. So if you don't know how to look for the endometriosis, you might miss the, the diagnosis and you don't refer the patient. So I, will, um, I think this is uh, um, uh, a problem that we have to uh, spread the word that you can see the ultrasound with uh, vaginal, uh, you can see the endometriosis with vaginal ultrasound if you know how to do that. The, uh, you need to change your uh, basic screening ultrasound to do a dynamic transvaginal ultrasound um, because uh, the dynamic trans ultrasound will not look only at the ovary and the uterus. It will look at the whole, the whole structures in the whole pelvis. So it will look at the ovaries and the uterus plus the mobility of both ovary and uterus. You will look at the partial of Douglas, not just for the fluid or any mass, but you will look at the obliteration if there is any um, uh, uh, adhesions in the Parish of Douglas. You will look at the vaginal wall, bladder, distal ureters, urethra. You can look at the uterosacral ligaments, the tubes, the anal sphincter, uh, anal canal, rectum, and rectosigmoid bowel. Um, the um, uh, international uh, deep endometriosis analysis group put a consensus opinion. Uh, dividing the, pel the pelvis into compartments, and uh, they do uh, they uh, recommend a systematic approach to look for this. Um, the uh, ultrasound, the dynamic nature of the ultrasound, um, uh, provide us with added value to uh, other modalities. It reveals information that you cannot get with the uh, uh, other uh, imaging modality because you can, um, uh, uh, you can have the trigger points, it will tell you where the, to look for endometriosis, and you can see the adhesions in between the organs. Um, the, their uh, recommendation goes in four steps. So the first step is the routine evaluation of the uterus and adnexia, but you need to look for signs of adenomyosis and the presence or absence of endometrioma. If you have adenomyosis, there is a 40% chance that this patient have also deep endometriosis. And if you have endometrioma, uh, uni or bilateral, uh, you have almost a 50% uh, risk for uh, having deep endometriosis. So um, how you will, um, when you do that, you will look for uh, signs of adenomyosis. And I think uh, uh, all of you uh, know the, the science that it's put by the Musa group. Uh, with the character of the uh, endometriosis. So if you see any uh, shape that it's different than normal uh, uh, uterus, uh, then you, you need to change your um, uh, ultrasound to, uh, from basic to uh, dynamic ultrasound. I will not go through these uh, features because this needs a whole uh, other talk. Uh, if you look at the endometrioma, you know how the endometrioma look like, uh, thick wall, hypoechoic, non-vascular, but you need to check also the mobility. So I will add also another sign that uh, is important to look at, uh, which is always, always associated with deep um, endometriosis. This is when you look at the uterus, you check the endometrium. And if the endometrium give you an ear sign or the shape, that means that this patient has a deep endometriosis. This is because the fundus is here, it's pulled back toward the cervix due to the um, uh, adenometriotic uh, nodules here, fibrosis and uh, scarring that pulled the fundus to the back. And this will lead to the shape of the uh, endometrium as, uh, as an ear sign. Uh, it's important to uh, do a deep, uh, to look outside of this uh, uterus to look for the deep endometriotic nodule. The second step is to evaluate the soft markers, uh, which is specific uh, site tenderness and ovarian uh, mobility. So the uh, site specific tenderness, you need to uh, poke with your uh, probe to uh, look for any uh, abnormalities in uh, any um, pain and when you poke on the uterus, a uterosacral ligament, the ovaries and pouch of Douglas, because when you have a lot of uh, severe pain, the patient will actually jump uh, in, in her uh, gynae chair from the pain. 
the mobility of the endometrioma. This is an endometrioma. I'm just showing the, the image that it's free from all around. When you do the movement, you can see it's free from the uterus, free from the side. So this is a free uh, mobile uh, endometrioma. But here you can look at this uh, uh, endometrioma, which is completely adherent to the uh, uh, uterus, the backward of the uterus. It's a little bit free from the superior part, but when you check any structure and the mobility of these, uh, of these um, endometrioma or any other structure, you need to check it medially, laterally, uh, superior and inferior. Uh, inferior is toward the sacrouterine ligament, medially toward the uterus and laterally toward the pelvic wall. Uh, the third step is uh, to uh, check if the pouch of Douglas and the sliding sign. Sliding sign is the same uh, as I, I showed in the last one when you uh, press with your other hand. This is um, uh, uh, the uterus here. You can see that it has a lot of signs of uh, adenomyosis, but it's completely free. The pouch of Douglas here is completely free. The uh, upper part here is free. So you know that when, if you are going to do any operation, uh, this uh, uh, uterus is, uh, is freely from, uh, from the sides of the other structures. This is in the pouch of Douglas. So here you can see uh, the, I put the probe behind the cervix. This actually will allow you to look and study the the posterior uh, vaginal wall and the, and the area behind the, the, the uterus. And this is completely free uh, pouch of Douglas. Uh, here is the uh, sliding sign in the pouch of Douglas when you have an endometriotic nodule here in the bowel and it's stuck to the back of the uterus. So this is a stage four uh, endometriosis and the pouch of Douglas is completely obliterated. You can look uh, at the last uh, uh, part of the of the your examination to the if there is any deep nodules in the anterior, anterior and posterior compartment. And uh, before you do that, we need to look just how they look like these nodules. So we have different shapes, but they are all hypoechoic nodules. It can be round or oval uh, or lobulated with regular outlines. It can look like a hourglass. This is usually you can see in the pouch of Douglas. Uh, it could look like a tail, uh, like narrow end, uh, like a comet sign. And the Indian head dress sign where you have prominent spikes toward the bowel. But if the spikes are toward the pelvic wall, it is called a pulling sleeve sign. These are some uh, examples of the uh, uh, the nodules, this is in the vaginal wall uh, at the higher uh, part of the uh, bladder. This patient had a hysterectomy. So this is after an hysterectomy that you have a vaginal nodule. And this is at the area of the trigon, uh, just above the urethral uh, orifice. You look at the distal ureter when you examine your bladder and you can see that the, um, the distal ureter is uh, on the lateral side of the, of the bladder. You just uh, push your probe to the side and you can uh, uh, see the vermiculation of the ureter. And this is uh, another case when you can see actually a stone lying in the ureter here. This is a stone on its way out. The patient came because of pain and I just had an examination to discover she had a stone. There was no endometriosis. Um, uterosacral ligament will appear as a thick hyperechoic band. Uh, you can see it uh, mainly if the patient in the middle of ovulation with a little bit of fluid, but with the time and with the experience, you don't need that. You can see that it's just a thick lining uh, just above the vagina, and you can see if there will be any uh, hypoechoic nodules there. The deep endometriotic nodules in the pouch of Douglas, you can see here, uh, this patient, uh, this is the uterus with a small endometrioma here, but you can see uh, a nodule behind the uterus. So if you don't look outside the uterus and ovary, you will miss this, this part. And uh, this is um, uh, the vaginal wall here, 
and this is the uh, uh, sacroiliac ligament. You can see the the uh, endometrial uh, small nodule in the, uh, the the origin of the sacroiliac ligament attachment to the uh, uterus with another nodule uh, in the um, bowel here. Uh, pouch of Douglas, you can have any deal without adhesions, so you know, the, as I said, how to, uh, when you proceed for any surgery, you know that what you expect, this is the bowel, and this is another bowel, and you can see a nodule in the pouch of Douglas on the peritoneum, and it's free uh, lining alone, and you can see that all this movement. This feature or uh, the dynamic uh, feature of the ultrasound, you will not find it in any other modality. So this will tell you if there is adhesions in between the structures. The bowel, um, what interests me here is the, um, the muscle layer. I don't need to concentrate on the other layers. And this muscle layer appear as a hypoechoic um, uh, structure or the layer. Uh, and with the, when you have deep endometriosis, this will be thickened and it can uh, invade uh, deeply as Dr. Um, uh, Samar just mentioned, it can uh, uh, go more deep toward the, the lumen of the bowel. Uh, here is the normal uh, appearance of the bowel. You can start from the anus and continue uh, actually up to around the 20 centimeter uh, high up in the in the pelvis and uh, sometimes you lose the the continuity but you can just go a little bit higher up and go down or uh, start uh, again and continue with that so uh, it's actually um, uh, quite accessible to reach up to the uh, sigmoid colon um, the uh, this is the same picture we uh, checked before. Uh, here it's the, the uh, Indian uh, head uh, sign, uh, head, Indian, Indian headdress uh, sign with the uh, obliteration of the pouch of uh, Douglas here. And this is also the, the endometrioma, uh, the uh, endometriotic nodule in the uh, sacroiliac ligament and in the bowel. This is uh, a patient with a very extensive uh, endometriosis and you can see the bowel is more than nine centimeter. You can see the continuity uh, behind the, the uterus with all of this large nodule. Uh, I wanted just to touch about the recent studies uh, that appear in the last few years about uh, diagnosing superficial endometriosis or uh, looking for features of superficial endometriosis by a minimal invasive saline infusion sonophotography. Uh, it emerged after uh, doing saline infusion um, for uh, sonohistrosalpingogram, uh, and you have saline in the pouch of Douglas. And what you see here is um, uh, during this uh, procedure, you can discover some nodules here. This you can see. And if you look at this part, you can see the, the pictures of the superficial uh, endometriosis. So we are not there yet, but I think in the future, we will be able to diagnose even superficial um, uh, endometriotic uh, or endometriosis in the in the by ultrasound uh, with the improvement of the technology and the, the improving it improvement by doing more and more ultrasound and we can diagnose more um, uh, cases of endometriosis and do the follow up. So the take home message of my talk is when you do basic transvaginal ultrasound, look for endometrioma, focal adenomyosis, and ear uh, shape uh, uh, endometrium. Uh, those patients are uh, very high risk for uh, having a deep endometriosis. Uh, change your scan to dynamic transvaginal ultrasound. And if you cannot, if you don't know how to do it, please refer the patient. So the patient will have a diagnosis and will be properly um, assessed. Check for pouch of Douglas sliding sign in all your patient. This you will, if you do it for all normal patient, you will gain uh, the expertise on how to do that. Uh, look for mobility to diagnose or exclude adhesions and site-specific tenderness. 
and look for the nodules in the vaginal wall, secretory and ligament, pouch of tobulus uh, in the whole um, uh, pelvis. Thank you.